especially invited guests, fellow Rotarians, conference delegates, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. I am Katrina Sam, past president of the Rotary Club of Barbados South, and I have been given the honor of calling this session to order this morning. I cannot tell you or convey how delighted I am to be able to look out of this room from this vantage point and see so many smiling Rotarian faces. I know you're wearing masks, but I can till, still tell that you're smiling. I could see it in your eyes. It's been a two year hiatus since we have been able to meet as a Rotary District family. So I'm really very happy to see all of you here this morning. And I know you're happy to be here as well. Welcome to our uh, Rotarians joining us in the district virtually. We wish you were here, um, but we know for some of you it was impossible, but we're happy that you're able to join us via uh, Zoom this morning. I feel so happy. Are you guys feeling happy? As a matter of fact, I, I think I've been trying to contain myself from singing that song, long time I ain't see ya. Okay. But since I've only been designated Sarge for 10 whole minutes, I will try to keep the decorum. In a few minutes, our distinguished guests will arrive. But until they do, I just want to uh, say first, Thank you to all of the conference delegates that have downloaded our conference app. I think over 60% of our delegates have already downloaded the app. And I, when I last checked, about 80, 185 people were actually uh, playing our conference game. And I realize Rotarians are very competitive. Uh, I see the ten, top 10 on the leaderboard. Um, and I, I see Rotarian Dalroy has taken an unassailable lead. I don't know if he'll be able to keep it. But um, the app is a wonderful communication tool which the Secretariat plans to make full use of over the next two days to communicate with you. So please enable the notifications on your app to receive alerts and messages. And if you haven't yet downloaded the app, I'm going to strongly encourage you to do so. Uh, to take the few, next few minutes to download the app. And of course, you go into the App Store, the Play Store, and download the Rotary District 7030 Conference app. So if you if you've not downloaded the app, please visit the, the app store, download the app, and then use the uh, invitation email that was sent to you last Saturday to verify. That's very important that you use that uh, email that was sent to everybody to verify so that you can unlock all of the functionality of the app. On the app, you'll find the conference schedule, information about the social events, um, our sponsors and our exhibitors attendee information so we can connect with each other and it's really really a wonderful tool so I want to thank PDG Lyle and Rotarian Matt and our solution team for pioneering the app last year uh, it really is a wonderful tool so please uh, download it if you haven't I've just been told that you can also log into the Wi-Fi um, go into meetings and the password is H meetings 2022 for the Wi-Fi. H meetings 2022 is the password for the Wi-Fi. So I have just received my cue that our distinguished guests 
uh, are all assembled and are on their way. So I'm going to ask you to stand as I officially call this meeting to order. Please stand and remain standing until the end of the invocation. We will now commence the presentation of flags. the flag of India. The flag of Trinidad and Tobago. The flag of Suriname. The flag of St. Vincent and Grenadines. The flag of St. Lucia. the flag of St. Kitts and Nevis, the flag of Montserrat, the flag of Grenada, the flag of Guyana, the flag of French Guiana, Guadeloupe and Martinique. the flag of Dominica, the flag of Curacao, the flag of Bonaire, the flag of Aruba, the flag of Antigua and Barbuda. the flag of Rotary International, the flag of host country, Barbados. Salute.
Let us pray. As we gather together as Rotarians and friends of Roti, we pray that our actions may reflect our desire to serve. Let us therefore close our lives with charity and deepen our lives with loyalty. Let us hallow our lives with integrity and help us to live our lives so that we may enhance the future of those whose lives we touch. In a world where many are lonely, we give thanks for friendship and community. In a world where many are despairing, we give thanks for hope. In a world that many find meaningless, we give thanks for faith. In a world where many are hungry, we give thanks for food. In a world full of needs, we give thanks for Rotary and the opportunity to serve. And we ask that you guide us in service. These mercies we ask, and we all say amen and amen. Thank you, Past President John. Please be seated. My final task this morning, I am pleased to welcome to the podium our District Secretary, Past President Paul Ashby, to guide you through the rest of this morning's ceremony. District Secretary. Colin Jordan, Minister of Labor, Social Partnership, and the Third Sector. Her Honor, Senator Elizabeth Thompson, Acting President of the Senate. Members of the Diplomatic Corps, Dr. Hygienus Leon, President of the Caribbean Development Bank. Mr. Henry, Mr. Kenroy Roach, Officer in Charge, United Nations, President, Coordinator's Office, Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean. Mrs. Sonia Aline, District Governor, District 7030, and her partner in service, David. Mr. Louis Weaver, District Governor, District 7020, and his partner in service, Amanda. Past district governors and their partners in service. Mr. Mario Boyce, District Rotorat representative. Mr. Leslie Ramdani, District Governor elect. Mr. Brian Glasgow, District Governor nominee. Ms. Debbie Rupchan, District Governor nominee designate. Members of District 7030 leadership team. Members, sorry, presidents of the Rotary Clubs of Barbados, our hosts, President Robin, President Rene, and President George. Delegates of District 7030, specially invited guests, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, members of the media, bonjour, good morning, guten morgen. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> The first thing I want to do is to my fellow delegates of the District 7030 is sincerely apologize for all of those emails that I flood your inbox with. I'm really, really sorry about that. But I'm delighted to be your master of ceremonies this morning. And I'm delighted for us to be here gathered face to face at our District 7030 conference for 2022. Of course, it's not my task to do the welcome. There's someone who's more deserving to do that. My good friend, your district conference chair, who when he was secretary of my club was an outstanding secretary and he has proven to be an outstanding conference chair. Please welcome our district conference to give you the welcome this morning, Neil Griffith. Paul. 
Good morning to our distinguished guests, fellow Rotarians, ladies and gentlemen. I welcome you this morning to our first District 7030 in-person conference in three years. What a special occasion this is that we can return to somewhat normal activities through this conference. What a testimony to us all as Rotarians to push ahead through the challenges of the past two years and return to what we do best, service above self with a dose or two of fellowship. The planning committee thanks each and every one of you for making the decision to be here today and this weekend, especially to those of you who have traveled to Barbados. We know the decision was not as straightforward as it has been in prior years. We know the extra thought that went into costs, health, risk and travel, especially in this current environment. But here you are, and for that, once again, I say thank you and welcome. To our, any, to our many members logged in virtually across this district, I also welcome you and thank you for taking some time out of your weekend to be with us. So happy to have you join us. This would not be a district conference if you weren't here with us today. Planning this conference was exciting, but not an easy feat. Faced with the initial headwinds of low sponsorship, increased costs, and some general concern that such an event at this time was not even possible. But yet, our conference committee persevered, motivated by the now famous statement of a former Barbados Minister of Health, no retreat, no surrender. Last year, we had our ups and downs. The country was on a path to reopening, only to be set back by wave after wave after wave. So pretty late along the way, we gathered all resources available to us, and we pulled this event together in a shorter than desired time frame. So thank you to the committee members for that. We just had to get it done. And we actioned another quote, which became well known over the past two years, many hands make light work. And so they did. So we got to planning, the program was developed, including our much looked forward to social events. I was going to mention our bus crawl through traffic this afternoon to our evening event, but as we're not serving drinks on board, it's not worth mentioning. Having said that, we're here to conduct district business and also have some good wholesome fellowship. I encourage you all to make the most of this opportunity to rekindle relationships with old Rotarian friends and to meet and embrace our new Rotarians who have never attended an in-person district conference. We started last night with the opening of our hospitality suite and we continue tonight with our beach party. Let's not forget our polio event tomorrow morning and there are shirts available now in the Secretariat. And of course, we're going to have our grand all-white masquerade affair tomorrow. Looking forward to seeing you all there. As we are all Rotarians, I need not remind us all to enjoy ourselves safely and responsibly and adhere to the COVID protocols in existence this weekend. Finally, as I end, I thank our District Governor Sonia Aline, our past District Governors David Edwards and Milton Innes, and each and every conference committee member and their teams for the invaluable support and dedication to bring this conference to life. Once again, I welcome you all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Neil. You do look like a, a wonderful audience. I don't know when it's the last time I've seen so many people in a space together. This is beautiful. I want to hear you though. Let me hear District 73rd, you're there. Yes, liking that energy. It really gives me a lot of pleasure to introduce this next person to speak to you this morning. I have a really long bio of her, but we'll see how we can deal with that along the way. I got this from Katrina Sam over here, past president Katrina. So this young lady was born in Georgetown, Guyana, on the continent of South America. Woohoo! Yeah. She moved to Barbados in 1979 with her parents after spending some time residing in the United States, Canada, and Antigua. 
Barbados became her home for the last four decades, and we've been blessed to have her as part of our volunteerism crew in Barbados. She's actually served in Rotary for the past 14 years in various capacities. So I'm going to skip all of that, and I'm going to go to this. So I was reflecting about uh, the year so far with the district governor, and I have seen her work. I think she has been to over 100 Zoom calls, no less than 100 Zoom calls. First time I've seen her tenacity, her commitment, her knowledge of Rotary, her strength, her ability to listen, her ability for recall, her compassion, her ability to inspire, her ability to give a hard word if she needed to, and she can do that easily. Um, she's met with Rotary clubs, she's met with Rotaract clubs, she's given, she's been at lectures, seminars, for me, it's been incredible to witness. In fact, I had to be at most of those meetings and I missed most of them. I didn't go to all, I confess. I couldn't keep up with the, gov the district governor. The reality is that she has led from the front with a steady hand on the wheel and with great accomplishments. The other thing is that for the whole year, she had one key positive message and it was that this, this, is com this district conference was going to happen. She never wavered in thought COVID, she was sure that we were going to be over everything and was going straight ahead. And guess what? We're here today. So it truly gives me a lot of pleasure to introduce our district governor of District 7030. Please welcome her warmly, Sonia Stacy Allen. Yes. Our DG. Distinguished guests, my Rotary District 7030 family, thank you so much for being here. How happy am I to see our Rotary family gather again after our last encounter in Martinique in 2019. As Rotarians, we're here to renew acquaintances, get a little training, learn about our fabulous district and the diversity within, and hopefully make a new friend over the next two days. We have weathered a storm that has proven us to be resilient, and as we have served to change lives, as requested by President Sheikha Mehta, we have surely, we have really shown up and showed off. Our organization has been able to transform overnight how we do things. We now meet as clubs comfortably online, not how we like it. We miss that interpersonal interaction, but we've also learned how we can be innovative in our fundraising. We have, through technology, been able to attend club meetings around the Rotary world and have speakers that we could never have thought or dreamed that we could have them speak at our meetings. The collaboration of our members locally, regionally, and around the Rotary world has been beyond our expectation. We have shown that we're indeed people of action. Thank you, Rotarians from the district, for joining us here in Barbados. And to my friend and fellow governor, Louis and Amanda, thank you for joining us. That's really been a, an absolute surprise and, and pleasure to have you here with us. Your presence here, we can now say, we're back. District 7030. This is a proud moment for me as district governor and for us here in Barbados, and I look forward to meeting each of you over the next few days and hearing your stories. I've heard many stories along the way. Paul, yeah, over 100 Zoom meetings. Um, and I've been fortunate enough to have traveled the district since January and I've met many Rotarians and I look forward to meeting many more. However, 
all of that's gonna, you're gonna get all of that in my governor's speech tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. To you, the specially invited guests, you are an important part of why we serve and make an impact in people's lives. We won't be where we are without partnerships. As Rotarians, we're grateful for your partnership with us. I close by asking everyone here to enjoy the next few days responsibly. We're still in a COVID environment, so masking, sanitizing, just generally being safe, responsibly having that fellowship water, as my Rotaract family like to mention. And I want you to really bask in the glory of being a member of the world's foremost community service organization, of which we proudly number 1.2 million people of action. Use the opportunity to truly connect President Shaker reminds us that service is the rent we pay for occupying a place on this earth. Please, make a difference in someone's life today. Serve to change lives. Thank you. Thank you very much, District Governor Sonia. We're not going to be treated to a little presentation. You have what it takes. This young man is an artist who believes that art is life and living is an art. And having a science of life without artistry is a recipe for mental illness. Art serves to shape and change lives. Whatever is not watered by imagination withers. It gives me a lot of pleasure to share with you one of our talents, Mr. Adrian Green. Give him a warm 7030 welcome. Please welcome Adrian Green to the stage. song like 8 30 in the morning <laughs> good morning everyone good morning. that's better it's better because you have what it takes you have what it takes to pull your foot off of the brakes of your life and accelerate towards the destiny that is your final destination and anything less would be a total desecration of the sacred temple that you are because you are blessed with visions that only you can see. You've been given dreams that only you can make a reality. And to rob the world of your unique contribution would be a tragedy. Because you have what it takes. You have what it takes to take those dreams from behind your eyelids. To, from the back of your mind to right in your front lawn or anywhere you want it, flaunt it. Your greatness is not to be kept secret. It ain't like the good cutlery that only special guests get to peek it, seek it. And when you find it, shine it like a star, a perpetual light to guide others like you, lost stars, to their rightful place in the sky. How high you want to travel? How high do you really want to travel? You can have a light years above the earth's surface or you can roll up in the gravel. Because we dig our own graves and we build our own castles. So let me know if they hand you some cement blocks or a shovel. One time I did this piece in a primary school and a little girl told me, Mr. Green, Mr. Green, hand me a space shuttle. Hand me a space shuttle because I plan to build a mansion on the moon. I don't cool out. I looked her in her, eye, in her eye and I said, little girl, do you have what it takes to get that high? Are you just a hot air balloon? But I could see, I could see that she had what it takes. 
what it takes to shake off the shackles of fear off of her shoulders, ankles, and wrists, and dive into the abyss of perils and risk, making mistakes and missteps, but still pumping her fist in victory. Confidence is not arrogance, and though life is full of mystery, we should not be mystified. In the court of history, our ancestors have already testified that we have what it takes by their very survival, by their very survival, when death would have been an easy escape. Our ancestors expressed their faith that we, their descendants, would one day wake and take our rightful place in this race, firm and forceful, but full of grace. To our tongues, our ancestors taste success. To their sacrifices, we are blessed. So nothing less than our best is required. It's time to get fired up and quake all those who would underrate you so they will never again ask you if you have what it takes. Because it would be obvious that you do have what it takes. And when we understand this, when we get this right, It will be easy, second nature, through service, to change lives. Thank you very much, everyone. By your applause, you've shown appreciation. Well done, Adrian. Do you have what it takes? Let me know if you have what it takes. Sounds like you do, at least over here. I'm not sure about over here. Do you have what it takes? Again, over here, but not over there. Uh, did you sound like we have to work with this side of the room a little bit? We're now going to have our feature address. And our feature speaker is the sixth president of the Caribbean Development Bank. CDB. The CDB is the Regional Development Finance Institution based in Barbados. He was elected at the special meeting of the CDB Board of Governors held in January 19, 2021 for a five-year term and assumed office May 4, 2021, right dead in the pandemic. Our presenter worked with the International Monetary Fund for over 24 years serving as mission chief for Tanzania, Zimbabwe, Nigeria, the Bahamas, the Gulf States of Oman, Qatar, and the United Arab Emirates. Prior to his engagement with the IMF, our feature speaker was an associate professor at the State University of New York. He also served as a director of research at the Central Bank of Barbados and country economist at CDB. You can appreciate that he has had a wide wealth of experience, and he's been through the ranks. He didn't start at the top. And he's most definitely qualified to speak to us on the topic, Rotary's role in building a resilient Caribbean. Please give a warm Rotary District 7030 welcome to Dr. Hygienist Jean Leon. Dr. Leon. Honorable Colin Jordan, Minister of Labor, Social Partnership, and the Third Sector. Honor Senator Elizabeth uh, Thompson, Acting President of the Senate. Mr. Kenroy Roach, Officer in Charge, United Nations Resident Coordinator's Office, Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean. Representatives of the Rotary sponsors for this meeting, the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc., Barbados Public Workers Cooperative Credit Union Limited, and Sajikor. District uh, Governor, Mrs. Sonia Aline. Chairman, Neil Griffith. Deputy Chair, Peter Thompson. Other district governors and delegates. 
members of other civil society organizations, especially invited guests, Rotarians, members of the media. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I am most appreciative of the invitation and the opportunity extended to me to address this gathering of global philanthropists. The Caribbean Development Bank, CDB, has long encouraged the active participation of its personnel, whether directly or indirectly, in service-oriented organizations and civil society in partnerships to propel our region's development. As part of this exercise, we are actively pursuing the input of a cross-section of groups and institutions in dialogue at our next annual Board of Governors meeting to be held in Turks and Caicos in June. You and your counterparts are viewed as partners and major constituents of the development community, a group with vast potential. Indeed, you possess the potential to increase public engagement, the potential to aid in expanding our footprint, and the potential to increase our talent pool, but more importantly, the potential to more significantly impact the lives of the citizens of our borrowing member countries. Your sustained drive to serve and materially change lives undoubtedly conforms with our ethos of transforming societies. The raison d'etre of the CDB is rooted in the growth of the region's economies. We are keenly aware that by positively impacting the most vulnerable, we continue to demonstrate unmatched resilience and responsiveness as a development agency. The bank therefore has been challenged by and has responded to the needs of our borrowing member countries by introducing novel and innovative approaches to support our membership. This roadmap to innovative service delivery has become even more pronounced with the circumstances created by the ongoing pandemic. And as we seek to get our countries closer to achieving the sustainable development goals, we continue to forge new partnerships and actively seek like-minded institutions to ensure we achieve our objectives for the benefit of our people. For our programming and strategic interventions in education, agriculture, private sector development, transportation, and infrastructure, among others, we continue to deliver to the region that which is required in furtherance of our mandate. In this regard, there are several similarities between the bank and Rotary. These commonalities, therefore, must be exploited to achieve a shared mandate, drawing us closer to the SDGs and the desired end state of an engaged and energized civil society network fully integrated into the development framework of the Caribbean region. I want to therefore start by outlining a few gaps that I think we need to be aware of. Importantly, income inequality within and across countries is on the rise. The most recent sustainable development report highlights a widening chasm between the developed and the developing world. Owing to size, remoteness, limited resource base, market size, exposure to climate risks and other disasters. The small island developing states, normally called SIDS of the Caribbean, are among the most vulnerable in the world. This has been further exacerbated by the COVID-19 pandemic. Importantly, our capacities to recover after external shocks is low. It takes on our, our countries, on average, three to four times longer to recover. Solutions offered by international financial institutions, multilateral development banks, 
and other international development agencies include funding to finance both recovery and long-term development efforts. As a leading regional financing institution, we have challenged ourselves to innovate and to increasingly collaborate to shape and support the development of our member countries. So what exactly are our goals when we talk of focusing on the Sustainable Development Goals? According to the latest Sustainable Development Report, SEEDS face significant challenges in all of the SDGs. Our journey to the SDGs continues to be hinged by our country's capability to recover from external shocks, whether climatic, environmental, financial, or otherwise. I think we would all agree that there is a pressing need for more responsive, trend-setting means of addressing the needs of our people and service delivery, particularly in the development space. Regionally, prospects for 2022 are favorable, with growth projected to increase to approximately 9%. Guyana is expected to lead by growing by as much as 47.5%, as output in the oil and gas sector continues to build momentum. The easing of restrictions to movement and increasing capital expenditure in the region are forecasted to cause a turnaround in economic performance in several economies. The outlook for growth is also underpinned by expectations of accelerated implementation of large infrastructure projects across the region. Notwithstanding these emerging green shoots, it still remains evident that our development needs are enormous, our development outcomes not sufficiently inclusive and sustainable, access to affordable finance not adequate, our resilience capacity not yet holistic enough, and our strategic perspectives on long-term development possibly not bold enough. The uncertain aftermath of the pandemic has underscored the need to accelerate progress on many key development issues, some of which are currently being tackled by your membership. Responses to issues related to healthcare and water supplies education and digital technologies can play a role in advancing progress to the SDGs and the sustainable development of small island developing states. So the question becomes where does Rotary fit into that space? Rotary with its diverse membership can help shape and reclaim development actions to the benefit of the SEEDS community. Having already established a vehicle to deliver some solution-oriented interventions, the dialogue with and engagement of international financial institutions, including the Caribbean Development Bank, can create a paradigm shift related to accepted modalities for engaging civil society and impacting development. This spirit is evident in the work of the Rotary Foundation, which has provided emergency relief and basic resources to those in need by tapping into a global network. Your ability to raise funds is clear from the multi-million dollar disaster response fund that you manage. The diversity of the 7030 district, which comprises 74 clubs from 17 countries, is a melting pot of not only culture, but potential ideas and solutions to address the needs of those in the wider society. The question to consider is how much more targeted and effective can your foundation be? Therefore, I challenge you and your membership to be champions of service to accelerate and to expand your focus. Why not embrace the cause of being development champions? 
subscribing to a partnership on advocacy for development? What about partnering in the design and implementation of not only short-term in initiatives in response to crises or providing basic needs, but exercising proactivity in resilience building? What about endeavoring at all times to anticipate the needs of those whom you wish to serve? Wouldn't this be as noble a cause as any you have effected over your history for the sustainability of the future of our children, the sustainability of the livelihoods of our people? If COVID-19 has taught us anything, it is to expect the unexpected. As a response and in service to your organization and the wider society, I urge you to strongly consider how Rotary can pivot to ensure through its programming it addresses the needs of tomorrow. I believe this endeavor is not one to be undertaken alone, but one of joint responsibility, one of partnerships, and one of sharing to grow. Therefore, this pivoting should take you on a journey beyond the normal and the traditional to the implementation of longer term initiatives with greater transformative impact. The bank in the last few months has initiated a process of deep introspection and reflection. We have challenged ourselves, our processes, and our vision, questioning the past and envisioning our desired future state, visualizing and articulating what success should look like. While challenging, it has truly been an enriching experience. We have also, during that exercise, identified some groundbreaking initiatives and reignited a creative fire which lay dormant for some time. I suspect if the same exercise is undertaken here over the next couple of days during this district conference, it may yield similar results. Over the next few days or hours as you meet new and old colleagues, I wish to encourage you to challenge yourselves and each other to picture the future rotary of a predictable organization in an unpredictable world. How can you, as a member on Rotary, pivot to create and sustain a resilient organization and a sustainable future? There are many in states, and you have a unique opportunity to mold it. Indeed, when future Rotarians look back on the history of the Rotary Foundation, would they be able to say, we predicted the future by creating it? The ball is now in your court, as I formally declare this conference open. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Leon, for your inspiring words. I just wanted to reflect on a few things that you, you mentioned. You identified the similarities between your organization, CDB, and Rotary, as we serve the, serve the same demographic of SIDS, small island developing states. Uh, you pointed out the challenges of inequality, income inequality, some other challenges that we also serve in our communities, healthcare, water supply, you left us with three particular challenges, which I noted. Uh, you challenged us to embrace being development champions. Uh, you asked us to be proactive in engaging in resilience building for our communities. And then you gave us a really big challenge of anticipating the needs of our community. And I think you've left, left us with a lot to, to think about over the next couple of days. So we really appreciate your your words this morning. And I now take this opportunity to invite you back to the stage along with our district governor so she might uh, offer some further thanks to you. Please join us on stage.
Dr. Leon, on behalf of the Rotarians of Rotary District 7030, we are grateful to you for your words this morning. For long we have wondered how can we partner with organizations such as yours and other development agencies. This is a timely word of advice, some, some good pointers for us as Rotarians to pivot and to make a difference in our communities. Thank you so much. A token of appreciation on Thank behalf you. of all of us here today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, District Governor. So we're almost there. Uh, I just need to raise one matter, and it's for our French guests. I think you may have been having some challenges with the translation. So I'm going to give some instructions now. So you're asked to log on to the Zoom link and then select French translation. The Zoom link would have been issued to you in your WhatsApp travel chat. Uh, some of you may have received it by email as well. But if you're uncertain after this, you can go to the Secretariat to just get that sorted out. But it's going to be, your, your translation is available on the Zoom link. And with that, we are very close to the end of this morning's ceremony. And so I now invite our hardworking district conference deputy chairman, who also happens to be the assistant governor of this uh, area, uh, deputy chairman, past president, Peter Thompson. Please join us for the vote of thanks. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, fellow Rotarians and guests, it certainly is my pleasure this morning to move the vote of thanks. First, I'd like to thank our specially invited guests, in particular, Dr. Leon, who delivered the featured address, the focus of which was Rotary's role in building a resilient Caribbean. Mr. Green, my, appreci my appreciation of your contribution is no less warm. Your inspirational message was both timely and relevant. I would also like to say a special thank you to past President John Williams for delivering the inv invocation. Your dedication to service will be rewarded in this world and the next. Attracting sponsorship can be challenging and in the current environment difficult. As such, I'd like to thank our primary sponsors, the Barbers Cooperative Credit Union, Sajikor, and Barbados Tourism Investment Inc. And of course, as luck would have it, my presentation just blanked out, so I will have to wing it. I'd also like to thank the leadership team who worked tirelessly on this event, uh, most especially the three co-chairs who know exactly who you are. Your timely intervention and your dedication um, has not gone unnoticed. And most particularly, I'd like to thank the most important people in the room, that being you, the delegates. Uh, we've certainly done quite a bit to plan this conference, but it would be all for naught if you weren't here, if you didn't share this moment with us, and if you didn't trust us with the task of planning this ceremony. I thank you and I regard you. Thank you very much, Peter. That brings us to the end of this opening ceremony. Uh, what will happen next is we will retreat to the courtyard for refreshment. Uh, the room is going to be changed over for our next sessions. 
I advise you to go to the conference link to see what those next sessions are. I think the next one is on uh, child obesity. So please see, see your conference link for that. And I'll ask you to let our specially invited guests leave first, and then you may exit after. Thank you very much. And have a fabulous day. Enjoy your district conference, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>